Remember the children of Israel? I mean, they just marching through Jericho's walls, fall down. I mean, they can't nothing touch them. They get to Ai, I believe it was. And God commanded them, don't take none of the spoil. And you know Achan? Yeah, took some of the spoils. He broke the legal decree of God. And then what happened to the camp? They began to experience defeat. Why? Because they gave the enemy legal ground. See, this is, this, is, this is about giving Satan no opportunity, giving no place to the devil. Because if he comes and he doesn't have legal precedent, get. Get out. I bind you. Go. Cast him out. He's got to go. But if he has legal precedent to be there, you can do all the talking in the world. Until you remove the transgression that gave him grounds, he ain't going nowhere. So now, the key is, we got we to gotta make sure the thief doesn't have legal ground, legal rights to my life. Now, John, I mean Daniel 10 Verse number 12 and 14 shows you very clearly that Satan can hinder your prayers. Things we believe in God for. Say, I don't want it to be hindered. Yeah, I don't want nothing hindered. Nothing hindered in my life. Hallelujah. I want to be able to pray and get it without satanic opposition. Here you go, Daniel 10, verse number 12. Through 14, then he said unto me, fear not, Daniel, from, 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 for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. So, so his words were heard the first day. And I have come, the angel says, for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there in the kings of Persia. Now, now, here's a prayer that took 21 days to be answered, and it wasn't God holding it up. It was a demonic entity that had legal rights to resist it, but got removed through the persistence of his prayer. Somewhere in our lives, whenever there is a, 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 a seemingly like season of time where you can't get a breakthrough. Most in general. Now, some things are the timing of God that deals with purpose and all of that. But, but I promise you, if, if you need a certain amount of money and you're trying to get blessed or you need healing or you need some for your kids, there ain't no time into that. The time is now. I need this money for this bill come. And so it's not like, okay, there's a timing issue. <laughs> yeah, after what? They didn't took my house? No. Anything you need is already supplied. Those timing issues have to do with God's plans and purposes for your life. But when it comes to God's promises, you can have them right now. Right now. Just receive it because it's already paid for. Now, you got to have faith for that. you got to be able to believe like that. But most in general, when there's hold up, when, there, when it seems like there are things that just won't break, there's an enemy involved somewhere with legal ground to withhold the answer from getting to your life. And it must be removed. Now, 1 Peter chapter number 5. Now we're getting to the, to the end of it. Thank you, Lord. First Peter, chapter number five. 
Let's look at this again. Verse number 8. says, be sober, be vigilant, be watching. Why? Because your adversary, once again, we're dealing with a legal term. Antidikos is the Greek word for adversary. Once again, plain and in a lawsuit, <laughs> Satan is looking to bring a lawsuit against you. So be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. That's good news. He has to seek. What is he looking for? Legal right. Your adversary, your plaintiff in a lawsuit is looking for legal rights to your life. Woo! Somebody say, don't give him any ground. Because that's what he's looking for. He's looking for legal rights. That's why you got to be sober. Be sober. He's your legal opponent. And that's why you got to be sober. You got you to be checking your spirit. You got to be checking your heart. That's why you don't ever want to become insensitive to conviction. You want a tender conscience so that the moment you sin, the moment you sin, I know this is, <laughs> I know this is so, uh, so um, alarming for some of you self-righteous saints um, because what you're going to find out is you're going to spend most of your days repenting. <laughs> and I know some of you have been years before, you know. You ask God to forgive you for anything, you know. It's just been years since you confessed anything wrong. I, I know. But you're going to find yourself walking around all day saying, oh, Lord, forgive me. Why? Because sin is judged by God and the adversary at the conception of thought. Not the doing of a deed. Now, the doing of a deed is sin, but sin be begins when the thought is conceived. And do you know what somebody is thinking right now? While I'm preaching, while I'm teaching the word of God, not everybody's mind in this building right now is on the word. You want to be sober. You want to be alert. You want to be watching. Wait a minute. Oh, no, not for the devil. The Bible says be sober and vigilant for your adversary. The devil is roaming, seeking whom he may devour. No, you need to be sober and vigilant, not about watching for him. The sobriety and vigilance is about you. So, the, so that you don't become one he can devour. You remember when I preached this the first time, I talked about the wildebeest migrating through the Serengeti. Come on, you've all seen those stories. And those lions are sitting out there, and the lion is not the fastest animal. You know, he's got all this brute strength, and he looks bad, but he can't run with a flip. And so all of the animals that have any kind of speed to him, he, he can't do nothing with him. So he waits. For one of those weak ones, or one of those limping, or wounded ones, and he takes advantage of them. The strong, healthy wildebeests and gazelles and animals, he can't do nothing with them because they just take off running. His strength is not in speed. That's the cheetah. That's all of that. But he can't, he can't do nothing. <laughs> just be lumping. Just <laughs> oh, they go. But they have to strategize. They have to, they have to get a game plan because they realize they can't just devour anything. They need an opportunity. And it's good news today to know that Satan needs an opportunity to devour you. And that's why you got to stay sober, vigilant. That's why you got to repent and confess and say, Father, forgive me. 
That's why you got to stay off his turf. That's why you got to quit doing certain things. Because you're going to keep giving him opportunities. Now, so be sober and vigilant because that tells me he can't just devour me. He needs legal ground. Okay, now go to Proverbs 26 and 3. This, this is, how can I say it? This is one of the most important sermons I could ever preach to you. It's one of the most important revelations I believe that's ever came to the body of Christ. Because this explains why so much happens that we seemingly can't understand. And, and I, I, I like to preach it because, you know, I love bragging on God. And I don't ever like people you know, you know, saying or, 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 or having a, a view of God, that God is not loving and kind and, and not there for us. No, yes, he is. You just got to get the devil out of the way. Proverbs 26. Look at verse number <coughs> 2. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. As a bird by wandering, a swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. That means the curse has to look for a place to land. That it can't just come. It doesn't just come. It, it comes like the birds have to seek for a place to land. 